Um, the first speaker in the second part is going to be Hippocrates Saltas, and he's speaking about the non-running Hicks inflation from an ERG perspective. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, let, me thanks, let me thank a lot uh, the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here today, and I would also like to uh, apologize to the organizers for the slight change in, my, uh, in the title of my talk. Well, the content is still the same. Uh, well, uh, I will be speaking about um, Higgs inflation. Um, you might probably, uh, most of you, uh, if not all of you, heard uh, about it. But um, I'm going to assume that uh, not all of you are uh, familiar uh, with the main uh, idea of, um, of the model. Uh, so I'm going to motivate it uh, uh, a little bit and uh, explain uh, uh, very briefly how, how it works. Okay, good. So um, uh, the, <coughs> we think, we think we know, uh, we think we understand uh, physics reasonably uh, well uh, up to uh, the electroweak scale. While there are still some big mysteries uh, at energies uh, well below that, but uh, up to the electroweak scale, we think we have uh, a good understanding uh, of, uh, of physics, and one of the most important questions is how the, the standard model of particle physics looks like for uh, energies uh, beyond the electroweak scale. Uh, so um, cosmology gives us a really uh, uh, powerful uh, opportunity to, to test physics beyond uh, this energy because uh, as we look very back, uh, very early back in time, uh, in the cosmological evolution, uh, and when I'm talking about very early on, I'm really uh, essentially I'm talking about uh, the the Big Bang or sufficiently close to it. We are probing very very high scale, very high energy uh, scales, so or very um, uh, uh, small distances, uh, if you like. And uh, we currently believe that the universe started with uh, a rapid uh, acceleration. Uh, which uh, happened essentially uh, after uh, a fraction of time after the Big Bang. And during this rapid acceleration, uh, this rapid acceleration solves quite, uh, uh, quite some problems of the standard Big Bang cosmology, but one of the most important uh, uh, ones which I will be uh, talking about uh, today as well is the generation of... Uh, the seeds of structures as we observe them uh, around us through the uh, tiny uh, primordial, primordial uh, quantum fluctuations. Uh, now, these primordial fluctuations uh, uh, have two, uh, uh, two forms, scalar and tensor fluctuations. The, the, the scalar fluctuations we observe on the cosmic microwave background, uh, they uh, manifest themselves as uh, uh, variations of temperature uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the CMB, tensor cosmic gravitational waves we haven't observed yet. However, this thing itself puts a bound on their uh, amplitude. Now, inflation, primordial inflation happens, uh, is expected to happen around uh, the gut scale, um, and uh, almost a very uh, interesting uh, observational window for uh, particle physics. Now, uh, Higgs inflation uh, is the, simply the idea that the Higgs, uh, the standard model Higgs, plays the role of the inflaton. Now, the Higgs has uh, some very nice uh, properties which could, uh, could make it a good uh, candidate. First of all, it is a scalar. We need uh, the inflaton to be a scalar so we don't uh, spoil uh, the isotropy of the universe. And uh, the model where uh, Higgs, the standard model Higgs is the inflaton is extremely economical because uh, uh, we, don't, uh, we really don't uh, need to introduce uh, any new uh, field content uh, into our uh, theory. Uh, as you might know, in cosmology, uh, uh, people usually introduce uh, many different uh, fields in order to uh, explain the, uh, uh, the uh, different observations. But uh, here, uh, we have a very good motivation to uh, consider the Higgs as the inflaton. Now, the implementation of the model is uh, pretty, pretty straightforward one. 
uh, couples minimally standard model uh, Higgs sector with the uh, uh, Einstein-Hilbert uh, the Einstein-Hilbert uh, uh, action. And this is the model I introduced. Uh, this is a, a model of chaotic type introduced by Andre Linde in 1985. Uh, now, in this, in this view, the inflaton, uh, the Higgs, starts uh, at very transplacian field values, some sufficiently uh, high energy scale, rolls down its potential, and it, when I'm talking about rolling down the pot this potential, I'm talking about rolling down the potential sufficiently uh, slow. This is what's usually called the slow roll uh, uh, approximation. So the, the density, the energy density of the universe dominated by the, uh, uh, the energy density uh, of uh, uh, the inflaton. And uh, in order to uh, describe, uh, to understand, uh, to, to do physics, uh, in this context, if the inflaton is really the Higgs, we need to have uh, a handle of how the, uh, the, the potential looks like at this uh, high energy scale. Now, what one usually does in this case is uh, starts, one starts from um, the, electro, the initial conditions of the electroweak scale, uses the standard model uh, beta for RG equations, evolves up to the inflationary scale and uh, looks like uh, how uh, that uh, and what well, this implies uh, about observations. Now, doing that and assuming, assuming that the inflaton is the Higgs, uh, one finds that uh, uh, there is a huge disagreement with observations. Now, this is because there is uh, a disagreement with uh, the amplitude of gravitational waves. The amplitude of gravitational waves, for which we have a bound of about less than 10 to the minus 10, probes directly the, uh, the amplitude of the potential. And if this is uh, uh, the quartic coupling of the Higgs, that is about uh, 0.1 or 0.01, depending on the initial conditions of the electroweak scale, and you can see that uh, the, uh, the fluctuations are huge to agree with observations. But there has been um, a twist uh, some years ago uh, where uh, the model has been um, modified in a way uh, that can achieve uh, um, agreement with observations. And this is the introdu introduction of a new uh, coupling, not present in the standard model. Uh, this is a non-minimal coupling between uh, the scalar uh, uh, and the uh, and the uh, curvature. So, in this view, um, the, uh, the scalar and uh, uh, the metric are kinetically mixed because phi couples uh, to derivatives of the metric through uh, the Ricci scalar. And one can perform a di diagonalization of the kinetic term of the, uh, of the, two, kine uh, of the two fields, uh, which is done through um, a conformal redefinition of the metric. And one arrives at the so-called Einstein frame um, action, which is um, classically equivalent, classically equivalent uh, to the um, previous one. Now, in this view, so there is okay, there is an essential uh, uh, redefinition of the scalar as well to uh, cano canonically normalize this kinetic term, and then we end up with this uh, potential, which makes um, the healing effect of this uh, coupling. Uh, Psi uh, evident. So in this view, we get a potential that looks like this. So uh, the field starts from this uh, flat, flat region. Um, uh, uh, at, again, at a field value of uh, the order, uh, more or less, of the order of uh, the Planck scale. And it has to cover a particular number of field foldings uh, so that at least during this expansion, the, uh, at least the observable universe is reproduced. And the energy scale of, uh, of this associated uh, with this part of the potential or the amplitude of the potential, here you can see that uh, it's suppressed by a factor of psi squared. 
Now, xi is a free parameter, which are, we are free to, um, to, to, uh, to tune uh, uh, using um, observations. And in fact, uh, as, you can, as you can see here, xi is going to depend on cosmological parameters like the number of fee foldings, the amplitude of scalar or tensor fluctuations, if you like. But also, there is an implicit dependence on it from uh, on electroweak physics, uh, like the top quark mass. And this is, uh, if one tries, if one evaluates uh, the cosmological uh, parameters in this uh, relation, arrives to something that looks like this. So the psi, the coupling psi, the scale, the inflationary scale, has to be 10 to the quarter times square root of lambda at uh, the scale of inflation. So this lambda is evaluated by um, evolving the standard model uh, beta functions up uh, to the inflationary scale. So actually, one, uh, from the potential, you can see that for sufficiently large values, we get this constant uh, regime here, this plateau. But as the field rolls down, then we get uh, the field is going to roll uh, uh, at, the, um, at its true minimum. Uh, and uh, hopefully, there's going to be uh, a graceful uh, exit. Now, what I would like to, uh, if I would like to uh, pass um, a statement uh, uh, today is the fact that one has to worry about radiative corrections to this picture. So I have been, uh, I have not been, to have, all the discussion so far is classical, but one has to worry about radiative corrections. And um, this is uh, what I will be uh, uh, explaining uh, is about corrections uh, coming from uh, Higgs and uh, graviton loops. In particular, whether these can affect um, the standard uh, picture, uh, the standard dynamics uh, of inflation in this context. So the, uh, we are using the, uh, the exact RG. Uh, I'm not going to explain anything about this equation. I'm sorry, uh, all of you uh, are experts on. So the action, the, uh, the, uh, the effective action, uh, uh, the answer for the effective action is one where uh, uh, Ritchie's color is coupled to a general function of f. The, the, this is just for generality. Uh, the a general scalar potential plus uh, a gauge fixing term and a Gauss term, which is, uh, comes after exponentiating the residual uh, determinant, uh, the, uh, the path integral. Now, expanding the field, we, we use a background field method. Uh, we expand the field into uh, background and a fluctuating piece. And the, um, the inverse propagator uh, entries uh, take, acquire this minimal form uh, after um, restricting to uh, a Euclidean sphere background where r and phi are constant. Now, uh, during inflation, this is a reasonable choice because due to the um, uh, slowly ro slow rolling of the field, uh, in the slow roll approximation, uh, field gradients are negligible. Now, uh, we get three types of uh, entries for uh, the inverse propagator, graviton-graviton, uh, graviton-scalar, and scalar-scalar. Uh, good. Now, one uh, has to uh, work out a method for cutting off, uh, for regularizing uh, the trace uh, in the uh, Vetterich equation. And um, for that, I'm, um, I'm using uh, a type 1 cutoff where uh, the, the cutoff acts to modify the eigenvalues of uh, the Laplacian. Uh, and for uh, the regulator function, uh, uh, an um, optimized uh, or Littmann's regulator uh, is used. Now, fixing uh, uh, the gate simplifies things a lot. Uh, I have fixed the gate to be the denoder gate, and one arrives uh, at the flow equation that looks like this. Uh, notice that these derivatives, these derivatives here, uh, come. Uh, are, uh, uh, come after the uh, manifest the uh, 
the non-perturbative character of this flow equation. I will be talking about uh, just the one loop approximation, so this will go, uh, this will flow to zero. And now expanding this equation pr to project in order to, into uh, operators, I'm going to, I'm getting a set of two uh, uh, equations for the, the non-minimal coupling function and the potential. Now, what is particular in this case is that I'm not expand. although for the Ricci scalar, I'm, expand I'm using this, the usual asymptotic expansion uh, of the Ricci scalar, where the, the Ricci scalar uh, in units of the cutoff goes, uh, is expanded around zero. This is not true for, uh, for the Higgs field, which I uh, assume it acquires a non-trivial web. Um, so I'm expanding around a non-trivial web for the Higgs field, and this is going to uh, appear as an external parameter, if you like, in my equations. Now, the equations, the beta functions look like this. I'm interested in um, the set of these three beta functions, the quartic, the non-minimal, and uh, Newton z. So what is particular uh, about these equations is that the non-trivial uh, uh, vacuum expectation value of the Higgs during inflation uh, acts uh, uh, he uh, brings in some uh, particular threshold effects which uh, manifest themselves uh, into these non-trivial denominators here. Uh, and in fact, for sufficiently large psi and sufficiently large uh, web for the scalar, they act to suppress the running uh, of uh, the couplings. In particular, um, what it turns out to be... Right. So... However, in order to, if I want to, uh, if I want to uh, evaluate, if I want to understand uh, properly uh, how uh, uh, this, uh, um, the, if I want to estimate an order of magnitude for these uh, quantities, I really need to know uh, the value of the cutoff during inflation, because this is going to determine how, uh, what phi, uh, tilde uh, is going uh, to do. So um, now remember that uh, phi uh, that uh, during inflation uh, the, the amplitude of the potential is approximately constant uh, at this uh, uh, plateau. So I'm using the fact that my expansion, my uh, the the, uh, the asymptotic expansion for the Ritz scalar, uh, which is used uh, to calculate the trace integrals, has to be um, less or order one. Maximum. So, using this uh, inequality uh, together with the ro slow roll approximation, which tells me that the potential probes, the amplitude of the potential uh, 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 is effectively uh, uh, approximately equal to the Ricci scalar or the Hubble squared parameter, if you like, it gives me an equality on the cutoff scale uh, during inflation. And now that I can translate to the uh, to a value for the um, dimensionless field during inflation, and doing that, what one finds is that uh, G uh, uh, is, the, the higher order corrections in G are sufficiently small, so G is in the classical regime, uh, Newton's it doesn't run, but most importantly, the lambda and psi uh, uh, running uh, receive, the, the, uh, receive uh, corrections of the order lambda over, over psi uh, to some positive power. Now, what this means is that psi, effectively, the sufficiently large value of psi, uh, has um, another healing effect, uh, then actually in combination with the non-trivial field uh, vacuum expectation value of the scalar, uh, the effect is to uh, uh, introduce threshold effects which effectively uh, suppress both the standard mo the, um, the, the uh, quantum gravitational corrections, but also the standard uh, uh, the standard perturbative, uh, standard, standard uh, the use of standard model terms here. So you can see that the use standard uh, lambda square term uh, in the uh, quartic coupling's beta function receives a, a correction of the order psi cubed. Now thinking that psi is 10 to the fourth, this is uh, really a, a huge uh, separation. Now, of course, one has to worry about observables. Uh, one has to worry whether any observable uh, uh, um, is going to uh, acquire any, uh, any running uh, uh, in this context. And the amplitude of the potential, which is an observable, or the fractional change of the amplitude of the potential at leading order is of the order lambda over psi cubed. 
Now for lambda order 0.1 or 0.01 and psi order uh, 10 uh, to the 4, this is uh, again extremely uh, small uh, number. And uh, the amplitude of the potential is effectively uh, runs, but it's unobservably, uh, unobservably small. Now, in the post-inflationary era, as the field flows down to its true minimum, uh, the th threshold effect ceases to exist. We, uh, one recovers the standard uh, equations, particularly the standard, the usual form for the, uh, for the uh, uh, beta functions for psi and lambda. Now, I'm not, I don't have time to talk about asymptotic safety, but I'm going to uh, just stand in some important, as I would think, uh, open questions. So, the stability of the electroweak vacuum is crucial in this case. I have not talked, uh, talked about it. However, any successful Higgs inflation in this context has to take that into account. Uh, now, the initial conditions for the model are very important because uh, uh, the, uh, the value for psi, for the non-minimal coupling required, is uh, particularly high. And one uh, uh, should come with an explanation uh, about uh, how that uh, 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 comes about, and of course, the inclusion of uh, Yukawa sector, the, this analysis by, after including uh, fermionics and Yukawa sector is important, together as well as the, um, the study of the frame dependence of the model. So I've done the calculation of the Jordan frame, but uh, although the two frames are equivalent classically, it's, that's not uh, always true at the quantum level. Now, if I would stand to uh, just a final remark, the running from uh, the Higgs and gravitons during uh, Higgs inflations appears to be sufficiently suppressed, and the flatness of uh, the potential is, uh, is preserved. And the ERG provides a uh, pretty an elegant, uh, quite an elegant description of uh, the quantum dynamics of the model. Thank you. <laughs>